All right. Hi, everybody. Um, I, I'm just going to get started, I think. Um, so welcome to my presentation on OKD4, OpenShift Kubernetes on Fedora CoreOS. I'm Christian Glombeck. I'm a software engineer on the CoreOS team within the OpenShift organization at Red Hat. Um, and yeah, we've been working on OKD, the OpenShift community distribution of Kubernetes that works uh, foremost on Fedora CoreOS. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, the, just a quick look at the, at the agenda. Uh, we'll talk about what is OKD4, what is Fedora CoreOS. You may have heard a little bit about Fedora CoreOS already. Um, then how to install. Then we'll talk about the OKD working group. We'll have a, a look at the road ahead. Um, and an Ask Me Anything session. So let's get started. What is OKD4? OKD4 is not an abbreviation. It's, uh, it stands for the Origin Community Distribution of Kubernetes. And what it is, what that means is it's the OpenShift code base, the same as the OpenShift product we have at Red Hat, um, running on top of Fedora CoreOS. Um, and the special thing about this is we have just one life cycle here. We manage the operating system upgrades through the cluster. Uh, so the operating system, Fedora CoreOS in, in the OKD case, really becomes just an implementation detail. And the, the administrator of the cluster doesn't really have to worry too much about it at all. Um, so yeah, we have a little graph here. Um, so we have an automated installation um, and one life cycle, as I said. Uh, the Linux host runs Fedora CoreOS. On top of that is the Kubernetes and OpenShift code. And on top of that, uh, we have, you can install any Kubernetes application. Uh, obviously, we're looking to make this uh, very easy with operators from the operator hub, which are at the topmost level as services the the cluster admin or, or the de developer can install on top of the cluster. And we run on almost all the clouds. So um, it's really just, yeah, it's, it's really the same experience on, on all, in all environments, which is really, really cool, I think. Um, so yeah, you can install on bare metal, virtual machines, um, OpenStack, uh, AWS, Cloud, uh, Google Cloud Platform. Azure currently doesn't, uh, we don't have images on Azure yet. You'll have to, it works, but you'll have to upload the images yourself before you can proceed. Um, so let's have a look at what is Fedora CoreOS. You, you may know a little about Fedora CoreOS already, but I'll just say it again. Um, it's an automatically updating Linux OS. It's aimed specifically at containerized workloads. It's based on RPM OS tree and ignition. I'll circle back to this a little bit, uh, in a little bit. Uh, it's built with a with CoreOS Assembler, which is our build system for composing the OS trees and uh, creating all the artifacts for the different different platforms for it. Um, and it's made out of Fedora RPM packages. This is the only difference really uh, between OKD and the OpenShift OCP product uh, we have at Red Hat where those are rel packages. Obviously, we use Fedora packages here. Uh, so just to say a little bit more about RPM OS tree. Um, so that is a really cool technology uh, where, where images are essentially composed. It's like Git for operating systems. So you have one commit describing the entire, the entire contents of the, of the OS disks. Um, you may know a few other projects that use OS tree like Flatpak or RPM OS tree specifically, like uh, Fedora Silver Blue and Fedora IoT and Fedora Core OS, obviously. Um, Ignition is our, well, yeah, it's our tool to, uh, to describe um, the config you want to get. So we don't use cloud in it. We have Ignition, which is uh, declarative, uh, and I think that makes it superior to cloud in it as well. 
So you can describe uh, any custom config you want in ignition configuration. And then that is applied at the first boot. And the once the machine comes up, it'll have the config you described before. So that's really, really cool. Uh, in the OKD and, and OpenShift case, we continue to manage that ignition configuration um, as a day two operation, which means after the initial install, ignition won't run again, but we will still um, be able to react to changes in that config. So how to install? It's, it's super simple if you um, use the IPI, the installer provisioned infrastructure path. You just head to OKDIO, go to download, download the installer, and then you'll need a an account on, on a public public cloud and it'll install automatically everything. That is if you want to spend that money on the public clouds. If you have your own infrastructure, you'll um, you'll use the UPI user provision infrastructure install flow, which uh, for which you'll have to set up a few things before you can run the installer and uh, get everything started. Um, all of that is documented on, on docs.okd.io. Um, and there's a few more links here. So we have a GitHub repository, um, OpenShift slash OKD uh, and OpenShift slash community. So if you wanna, th there's guides there for very, yeah, for a few setups on various clouds and also some minimal setups um, if you don't need a full-blown cluster. So, uh, the OKD working group. We've been working, uh, yeah, hard on, on getting OKD out. So OKD4 is GA now, and we've done that uh, with the OKD working group. So there's a few engineers from Red Hat, Vadim Rukowski, Charo Groover, um, we have Diane Mueller, our community director there. And uh, yeah, we have bi-weekly meetings on, um, on a BlueJeans video chat. So you can find the dates for, for those uh, on the um, Fedora calendar OKD. So that's apps.fedoraproject.org slash calendar slash OKD, the FedoCal. Uh, we also hang out on Slack all the time uh, on the OpenShift Dev and OpenShift Users channel on the Kubernetes Slack and on on all, almost all the channels in the OpenShift Commons Slack. If you're uh, if you remember there, uh, yeah. Again, the two repositories as well, and we have a Google group that we also use as a mailing list. So everything uh, we discuss. Uh, all, yeah, all important things are usually sent out on, on that. And you can start a discussion there as well if you don't use Slack. And I think, uh, I think I missed the road ahead section here. Um, let's just, yeah, the road ahead. So um, I think I missed the slide somewhere. Well. So we, we're planning, as part of the uh, OKD working group, we've sort of created a roadmap together with the community. And the first part, phase zero, we've just finished, was uh, releasing GA, OKD for GA. Um, so we're very proud we got that out the door. And now we're looking into the future. There's many things still to do and um, things we can can try and and. Uh, well, develop in, in the longer run. And our one of the main reasons why we wanted to have OpenShift run on Fedora CoreOS as a prime target is not only that the community benefits from it, obviously we want that, but we also now have a, a feedback cycle, essentially, where we can test out the things on the newest, on the Fedora kernel, and on, on all the things that will end up in, in the next rel release, essentially. So it'll also our product will benefit from it, um, which I think is really cool. We, we never really had that with um, OpenShift Origin or OKD 3.x, but now we really have, have this 
ability to test things before it lands um, in the product. So I really want to invite everybody to the working group. If you want new features, if you think there's an operator that needs to run on OKD, um, please join us. We have a, an operator wish list. Um, so we're going to work on, on uh, enabling all those operators to run on OKD as well. Right now, we've just focused on the core operators, on the core OpenShift, make that run on Fedora Core OS. Uh, there's a few things because Fedora Core OS is not the same as Rel Core OS. We have, um, for example, we don't have Python on Fedora Core OS. So there's a few limitations there. We really, because th that is because we really want to have people run their applications in containers on Fedora Core OS. So everything should really be packaged as a container and not run on the host directly. Some operators on the operator hub still rely on dependencies like that. So there, there is some work needed. And um, I'd like to invite everybody to, to join us, to help out with this effort. Uh, the more people we can get, the more testers, the more um, volunteers, that actually contribute there, um, the better it'll be and the, the quicker we'll get there. Um, and that is, I think, that is the great thing about the OKD working group, because now we have, we have enabled the community to actually contribute to OpenShift upstream development and operator upshift to, uh, upstream development. Um, yeah, that was, that's the road ahead. We really want to enable and build out that ecosystem. We also want to use OKD um, for, for new features or new technologies that haven't, that haven't landed in, in, in the product yet. So for example, if there's anybody in the community who, who'd like to use Cilium or something, um, we really want to help out with that effort and discuss design and um, options to to make that work because that is i think um beneficial for everybody um so yeah once again please join the okd working group if you're interested um yeah so we have those meetings um they're on the calendar and also if you have if you hit any issues if it's a technical one um like a an RFE or just a bug, uh, please open an issue on the OKD repository. If you have questions about the working group itself, the process, ideas how to improve that, um, the community repository would be the right place. And with that, uh, I will answer any questions. I'm not sure if uh, people can activate their microphones, but otherwise I'll just look in the chat. If you have any questions, please go ahead. I'm happy to answer. Okay, so there's one question. Uh, actually, let me scroll up a little bit. Okay, uh, support for libvirt VM installation. So we don't have support for it, but it is possible. Um, we just don't test it very often um, because it needs a huge uh, VM essentially. Um, we have quite a large footprint still. That's another thing we wanna uh, work on reduce uh, the size of an OpenShift OKD installation. Um, but it is possible to run it in libvirt. You have to build the installer yourself um, because that is usually disabled in the binaries. But you can do that from the OpenShift uh, installer repository. There's a an FCOS branch. Essentially, we, we have still, it's the, exactly the same code base um, except for right now two repositories with the next release, it'll just be the installer uh, that is different. And that has to be different right now because we have to reference the Fedora CoreOS images um, and not the, the RHEL CoreOS images. 
So if you go to that uh, repository, the OpenShift installer on GitHub, and go to the FCOS branch, FCOS branch, um, check that out, build the installer from there, um, you will be able to install it on libvirt. Let me check a few more questions. Um, wouldn't libvirt work via something like kubevirt? So there is um, an, an operator for kubevirt and you can run that. That is kind of the, the other way around. Um, installing on libvirt, you install it in the libvirt virtual machine. And with kubevirt, you can run virtual machines on your cluster. Um, I'm not sure if that, you can probably nest that as well, but that's definitely the thing we haven't really tested. Um, but there's the kubevirt operator, um, which will enable you to run virtual machines in containers on OpenShift, on OKD. And that was one of the things that had a Python dependency up until like two weeks ago. So I'm not sure if the new release is out yet, but with that release, uh, that commit has merged to fix, to, to drop the dependency. So the kubert operator should now work on OKD as well. We haven't had time to test that uh, though. Um, any feedback on that? If you want to give it a try, that'd be great. Why not add libvirt uh, as well? Yeah, we, we've disabled it in the in the main binary because it's it's not a thing um, you want to use in production. Really, it doesn't make too much sense. OpenShift is made for uh, high availability, and if you run it all in one VM, um, you get none of that. So yeah, it's not a production grade thing. I wouldn't recommend um, anybody using that for for actually. Uh, for, for actual production clusters. So that's also why we've, why we've disabled it because there's not the real use case we wanna give uh, with, open, with OKD. Uh, after all, this is an enterprise grade cluster. So you get all the goodness of, uh, of OpenShift, the product with all the security, all the, uh, the developer tools. Um, it's really, yeah, it's really Kubernetes on, on steroids. It's, and it's highly automated. I, I just, I think I haven't really uh, stressed that enough. It is highly automated. So you have, you, you essentially have a cluster on autopilot. Uh, it'll update itself if you, oh, right now you still have to click a button, um, but it's, yeah, it's really super easy to maintain. Okay, hey, um, Matthew's question. Uh, how closely tied is FCOS going to be with OKD going forward? Will FCOS be primarily recommended for use with OKD or will it serve other use cases? Conversely, is OKD supported on other distros? So um, we are one use case for Fedora Core OS. Fedora Core OS is still a thing that you can also use in the single node use case where you just want to run uh, Podman containers or even use Docker if you still want to do that. Um, and yeah, OKD is the cluster use case for Fedora Core OS. So we will we actually will have a release schedule that'll lag behind Fedora Core OS by two by I think one week. Fedora Core OS has biweekly releases, and we'll do biweekly or we are doing biweekly releases in the alternating weeks in between those uh, Fedora Core OS releases. So we can test those changes in the new Fedora Core OS images for one week before we um, put out another OKD release. So it's not super strictly coupled, but obviously it's one big use case for Fedora Core OS. But still it's separate projects. Fedora Core OS wants to support other use cases as well. And OKD right now only supports Fedora Core OS um, as a base operating system. But we've said from the beginning that we'll do Fedora Core OS first because it makes most sense for us as a community and also uh, for the company to, to get that feedback cycle. Um, but the community has already expressed interest in, for example, Core OS uh, uh, CentOS. 
sorry, CentOS uh, as base operating systems. And for that, obviously somebody has to build um, kind of a CentOS core OS, RPM OS tree and create the artifacts from that. And that is certainly possible. We just haven't had the time to look into it. And we appreciate any, any help from the community there as well. And it's, it would also be possible to take uh, Debian packages, compose that into an OS tree and use that as the base operating system. Um, obviously the cluster side, we have this machine config operator that does that maintains the, the ignition config after installation and maintains the disk state. And obviously it, that has a few assumptions about the operating system. Um, but then again, that works with both RHEL and Fedora package sets right now. So it's certainly possible to, uh, to also use Debian or Gentoo or any other system. You just have to compose it into an OS tree and then you can uh, get started with testing that. Um, yeah, primarily we focused on Fedora Core OS now, but now we've gone GA and we'll be open to uh, adding more OSs in the future as well. What's the minimal required footprint for OKD clusters? It is quite large, so I think the recommendations, the, it's the same recommendations as the official OCP OpenShift product. So you'd want um, six nodes, three masters, three workers, um, and each with 32 gig RAM. But I, well, is it each? It's, it's definitely a lot, but we've been able to cut that down and even install it on eight gig machines. Um, yeah, but that's not officially supported. We're definitely working on making that um, officially supported. It works right now. And I think Charo um, and also Vadim, if he's here, have, have, done a quite, have done quite a bit of testing on that already. Um, but yeah, uh, right now it's re really recommended to have, to have a beefy machine or multiple beefy machines. You, you can also make the master schedulable. So you only need three masters but three is the, the minimum um, required to get a proper install because of etcd, which needs to uh, maintain quorum and that high availability at all times. What is the interest in making OKD available for all architectures Fedora supports? That interest is big. So we really want to do that. Um, and that was Dennis Gilmore's question. Um, and yeah, we definitely want to do that. And uh, that is a thing we will be focusing. So I'll, I'll definitely uh, approach you, Dennis, and uh, to talk about that because we already, we, for Fedora CoreOS, I'm not sure we're releasing all those platforms or built for all those platforms yet, but we already have the infrastructure to build them. So uh, with OpenShift, we just have to rebuild all the containers um, and then it should, it should run. So we just have to set up a few infrastructure bits to, to get all that built, but I think um, we'll get there. That's definitely the thing we want to do. So yeah, and just uh, for the comment, uh, Glenn, there's a new OS tree builder uh, that you can roll your own. Um, yeah, we're looking. We're also looking into into um, into how we can uh, leverage that. So um, I think there's quite a few interesting bits we can have a look at here. Um, okay, next question. Not really a question, but Charo uh, just reiterated that we're going to. Uh, start working on minimizing the footprint. I think that's a, that's also a thing uh, the community has requested quite a few times because not everybody has their huge enterprise set up ready to to roll their own cluster out. And that's, that's definitely a thing we'll also look at. Yeah. 
definitely that uh, the minimization um, objective is a thing that I've I've also kind of peeked in from time to time, and I think um, minimizing that uh, the entire system is yeah is just important to to do, and uh, it's a good long term goal. Right now, we're super happy with just released GA. And as you, as you can see, there is still a lot of things to do. Um, so if you want to join, I'm, I'm just going to say that again. If you want to join the working group, please do it. Uh, that is really the opportunity for everybody to contribute to, um, to voice their opinions and their, their problems and request new features or even offer to, to contribute some code. Um, because that is what we've also enabled now. You can really contribute at, in the upstream development now. So yeah, I think my time is up. I'm not sure if there's more questions, but thank you all so much for joining. Um, and please continue to enjoy Nest with Fedora.